Welcome to Spooktober. <laughs> I got my vampire teeth in, which is probably going to make me talk funny because it sounds funny already. I don't know if I want to leave them in now. <laughs> I look creepy as shit. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that. I feel weird. Maybe I should take them out or be like on True Blood and just suck them back in. However... It's not even a vampire story, although if I get into any of the stories about living people, they are vampires. They're uh, energy vampires and blood-sucking leeches, basically, because sometimes the living can be more scary than the dead, I'm just going to say, especially in certain circumstances. Um... Yeah, this is making me sound like I have a lisp from hell. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. I might have to take them out. I think I'm gonna. They're the ones that clip in. They're really cool though, I mean, but I'm doing a lot of talking. If I was in the background being all creepy and weird, that would be a whole different story. So I guess that didn't work out. My plans don't normally work out, so whatever. That's why I don't like to make plans. Anyways, yeah, that was making me sound all lispy. So, welcome to Spooktober, where I do my creepy story times, and like I said, sometimes the living can be more creepy than the dead, but I'm going to start off with dun, 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 an Ouija board story. So, a lot of people fear the Ouija board. They think it's demonic, evil, whatever, um, and I'm not here to tell you yes or no or whatever. I'm not here to sway you in one way or, or another, but there are some creepy things that happen with it. And, you know, any tool that we use, like the pendulum, which I do love using the pendulum, or tarot cards, oracle cards, what have you, even certain crystals and stones, we're using them to communicate with the other side, your higher self, whatever, to bring in um, different types of energy so that we can get information. It's it's pretty much the same thing. Or they're, they're all very similar. You need to protect yourself when you're using any divination tool. So just remember that and you should be safe. Um, and if you don't understand what you're doing or you don't know how to do it properly, you don't know how to use any of these tools, do your research first or talk to somebody who's experienced so that you do it correctly. Um, I didn't do it correctly <laughs> at this point because I was a kid. So of course I had no clue. And half the time, you know, I feel like when, when children or teenagers mess around with divination tools, they don't believe in it until something creepy happens and then they're like, oh crap, what the hell did I do, you know? And then they're into a whole world of hurt or whatever. Happens a lot. I've tried to protect my children from that and for the most part now, especially, my daughter definitely listens. My son doesn't mess with anything. But Emma, she know she learned the hard way because she thought that she could handle it all on her own a few times and um, some pretty creepy things were going on. I feel like my nephew did the same thing because before I get into this Ouija board story, what's going on right now actually at my sister's in her apartment and I've already had to do a cleansing there before. I remember she needed help because she kept getting this really off negative feeling in her apartment and I had had I did a meditation and some information had come up about her and I had told her about it and she was like, it doesn't feel like that energy, but I know who you're talking about. Um, cause I was on my way to her house to cleanse out, to cleanse the, to cleanse the, the space or whatever, to clear out the energy. And if there was anyone there, you know, causing a ruckus, I was going to try to either cross them over or just remove them from the area because they don't really belong there. She didn't want them there. And I had to teach her how to take her home back and all that stuff. So there's a different entity or spirit there now. I'll say spirit because it is, it's, it's not an entity. But anyways, prior it was this elderly woman who had passed away and <laughs> It's so crazy how this stuff happens and I got clarification on what I had, the information that I had received um, after the fact. So on my way there, I got the name Jim and I'm like, hmm, who's Jim? I don't know who that is. So I had told my sister about this man who 
he had lived in the apartment building before and I didn't know where he was just in there and he had died due to an alcohol alcohol related incident so I wasn't sure if it was like alcohol poisoning or um you know if it was just alcoholism you know because that will your body will deteriorate if if you drink too much all the time um and come to find out well this man that would this gym guy was in her he would wake her up at night because like if my sister was taking a sleeping aid or something um she wasn't breathing properly and I felt that in a meditation and he would jump her awake and I had asked her I was like do you ever get startled awake in the middle of the night like oh my gosh and you feel like you can't catch your breath or you need to and she's like yeah and I was like and I explained to her what I saw and she told me that there was a guy named Jim that lived in her apartment building who was an alcoholic and that's pretty much how he passed away and I was like, well, he keeps an eye on the premises and he was basically saving you and making sure that you're good. So we don't want to get rid of him. And he's still there and he kind of pops in and out and he just keeps an eye on everyone in the building, which is kind of cool. That's not creepy, but um, I guess it can be to some people, especially if you don't understand it. But when I showed up there, there was this elderly woman who was there and she was highly 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 religious like seriously and my sister's the way that she lived her life she lives her life is not within the guidelines of what this woman would like basically so the way that my sister lives goes against everything that this woman believes in basically and it I, she wanted to like save her soul or something I don't know or try to convert her over and I don't know what her religion was exactly but she was very very she was very she stood strong in her convictions I'll just leave it that way and my sister's clock every time she would like the clock on the stove every time she would fix it and you know reset it it would always mess up and go to the same number and I'm like there's a significance with that number and come to find out it was because I, I think I heard the word Matthew it was a, a bible verse I can't remember the number sequence now like what it was but I didn't even know what verse that was or anything but when I heard it I wrote it down and um, then I had looked it up and it was basically about how saving your soul ultimately because she wasn't living a pure life um so I had to have a talk with the woman and she didn't she wasn't very happy she just was not happy but she ended up leaving and come to find out the new tenants below my sister well they weren't new like she knew the person that lived there their aunt and uncle or mother I don't know family members of theirs had moved in and their mother had passed away and their mother was very, very religious. And I was like, it must have been her because I felt the connection to that apartment. And I had even asked and my sister had no clue. So she, she ended up talking to him and that's how I found out. But my sister lives like right across the street from a funeral home, which does not mean that there's going to be a boatload of activity. But every now and again, you know, visitors will show up. And she hadn't had a problem for the longest time. And um, and then all of a sudden, my nephew was all scared. And he was like, Auntie, you know, I, I need I need help. There, there's, a, there's a man that is bothering me at night. He said that he was hurting him at night. And so, he, like, he was feeling the physical energy. And I guess one night, he had banged on his door. He just heard, like, boom, 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 boom and like let me in and he wouldn't let him in and I said you did the right thing you you never should let someone or something in if you're unaware of who they are or you know what their intentions are so I was proud of him for not saying yes but he was terrified and my sister didn't believe him at first and then you know he has kind of a wild imagination and he doesn't always tell the truth so it is hard to believe stories sometimes but he just he's very adamant that you know this there was someone there, someone bothering him, and he knew it was a man. And I was like, well, let me tap into the energy. And I tapped in, and it is. It's an elderly man. And I don't know exactly how he passed away because I wasn't, like, discussing things with this guy. I just knew that he was upset over something. And I don't know 
if it's a similar situation where he's upset with the way that they're living or or what but I kind of get a sense that he's confused so he could have passed away um like while he had dementia so I almost there's a little bit of confusion as to where he belongs and like he doesn't really know where he is I almost feel like he thinks he's somewhere else in a sense I don't know if that makes any sense but um because he kept telling my nephew to get out like you know you're in my house get get out and he never lived there it's not his house he just kind of showed up but like I said the funeral home is right across the street and if this person had dementia and it's kind of like a I don't know a stuck energy because that's what it feels like there's some there was a lot of confusion and anger and stuff like just that was vibe I was getting um I just kind of feel like he he just kind of moved in and figured like there's a there's kids here I don't want you here you don't belong here even though he's the one that doesn't belong but anyways what finally got my sister to believe is my daughter Emma was over there and they kept hearing noises and they were seeing things and the dog my my sister's dog was you know its hair was raising up and she was growling at nothing basically so my daughter decided to take pictures and do a little mini video because you know I taught her well <laughs> she likes capturing that stuff anyways so she sent it to me she sent me some pictures I didn't see the orb in the photograph that she swears up and down it's in I, I just couldn't see it in there so either it was there maybe it wasn't I don't know but she caught it in the video I clearly saw it go through and the craziest thing is that she had no idea that she caught an EVP as well so when she sent it to me that was what I noticed before I even saw the orb float through I heard get out in this stretched out like get out type voice it was crazy because she put the video the little clip in slow motion so that you know I could see the orb better and she didn't realize it and I was like did you hear what you caught and she's like what so she plays it back and she's like oh my gosh that's what we heard like with our ears and so of course it freaked him out more so I sent them a prayer and I was doing my own little protection thing from where I am or where I was because I wasn't there and that's kind of when I got the energy of this man and I just basically told them I'm like you know William take the house back that's my nephew and you know don't don't fear him he's no one to be feared it's not like evil or anything he's just a grumpy old man basically <laughs> but make make it known that he is not allowed to touch you or utilize your energy in any way shape or form so I was just kind of coaching them through it and he hasn't complained since, but I got to go over there and cleanse the house again. So I just feel like every time the barrier goes down, if she doesn't keep up with it, they're going to have some visitors. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, spirits are naturally drawn to children because of their innocence and the fact that they can see and feel and whatever. Um, and I don't know if he's gifted. I haven't really looked into it or anything, and he very well could be, but... Um, it's, it, it, he's still young, you know, I mean, he's not wicked young, but I'm very open-minded. So we talk about that stuff a lot, but anyways, so there was that, that just happened relatively recently, which kind of scared the kids the most. Cause like I said, I wasn't really there for that, but my Ouija board experience, <clears throat> which is what made me think of all of this, because like I said, my daughter and my nephew were both messing around with things they should have been messing around with and he was so terrified that that he brought this man in which you know he could have depending on what he was doing because like i said he doesn't always tell the truth so he could have been doing things he shouldn't have been doing ultimately but anyways i was young i was about i don't know 11 12 ish around then it's all a blur you know age wise timeline but i was young and I remember my aunt was over the house and she was she was keeping an eye on us because we didn't need to be babysat at that point but my parents had gone somewhere and they were gonna be gone for a while which is why she was there in the first place and um, when she found out I had an Ouija board she's like oh let's talk I was about the age of 10 10 11 because that's right right after my bumpy had passed away 
and um she wanted to talk to him because she really you know she was closer to him than I was because she grew up more so with him and she's like oh yeah Ouija board let's you know let's try this out so we were using it and it was working and I was I thought it was the coolest thing because it was answering questions that I didn't have answers to so I mean I don't know if she moved it or not she swears up and down that she didn't and I, I honestly believe that she wasn't moving it and we weren't because it was me and I believe my friend was there one of my friends was there for that and it was just a really cool experience and uh, I mean, it it blew my aunt's mind to the point where, you know, she was talking to my mother about it, because my mom's sister, and my mom was kind of like, huh, you know, I wouldn't have believed it if Jessica said that, or if her friend said it, but, you know, I'm kind I'm, that's kind of, I'm kind of curious now, because you're saying it, and I believe you, kind of thing, because you're an adult, and whatever. So they got talking about psychics and ghosts and all that. And it was a really cool experience. So that wasn't scary. But what, after that happened, I'm like, oh, we can talk to anyone we want to. You know, I got really excited. So, of course, me and my friend are in my room. And we're like, I think this was it. It was either the same day or like the next day or something. But it was during the day. I think it was the next day. So it's like, let's try this again. So we do it. And it started working for us. It was moving, but it was going really slow. And I can't remember what it was saying, but it was mainly yes and no questions. And I think, it, I think we knew it was a man and probably by his name, the name Edward is coming to my mind for some reason. So it could have been an Edward. Uh, cause I do remember that name for some reason. And the name Frank is popping up too. But anyways, I think it was like one of those. And, uh, which is weird because I, I had a grandfather named Frank as well, but he was still alive at that point. But anyways, um, he wasn't like blood related to me or anything. So we were talking to this guy, he told us his age or something, and he was on the younger side, like in his twenties or whatever. I don't know. And like I said, I don't really remember what he was saying, but I remember it started getting kind of dark, like we started getting like the creeps, like it was feeling like this isn't, this didn't feel like when we were talking to Bumpy, this, this feels kind of like, I don't think we should be talking to you kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, cause I, we might've even asked that question, like, are you good or are you bad? Or like something along those lines. And then all of a sudden it just starts spinning like in a circle. And I'm like, I took my hands right off. I'm like, um, that don't seem like anything good. Why are you acting all crazy? <laughs> like, you know, ah. so I was like, I think I'm done with this. And we stopped for a little bit. And then all of a sudden my radio turned on. Oh, we had asked for a sign and it had started spinning. I'm like, Nope, I don't know what kind of sign that is, but screw it. And I'm like, you're moving it. And we were like arguing with each other. She's like, no, you're moving it because we're kids. But anyways, and then my radio turned on and I was like, what the mother of crap bluetooth didn't exist back then it was a friggin stereo where you have the box component and the separate speakers and on the top it had that plastic cover and it was like a five cd fucking whatever player on the top and you had to literally there was a pretty hard button that you had to like crank over it wasn't even a push button it was a like click click or whatever to if you wanted the radio or cd or whatever and it went straight to the radio without even clicking there's an orb that just is dancing around that was so cool anyways hopefully the camera caught it because i totally saw it but the it went right to the radio which is like the last one the am fm and without even clicking the button and i was like oh what the hell so i ran over and i unplugged it from the wall and i'm like oh no we're not doing this. <laughs> like it scared the crap out of me. So I told my friend, I was like, you know, we're not playing this in my house anymore. I'm too scared. Like I was afraid to go in my freaking room after that. So we went outside and I'm like, you know, maybe we should get rid of this thing. We should like burn it or something because I'm getting a bad feeling. And even as a kid, you know, you can tell when something feels good and when something feels bad. And I was getting scared. 
So she's like, oh no, you're just scared or whatever. So we go outside and we're sitting on the patio, <clears throat> which is right in front of, we had a above ground pool and the patio blocks were like that rough concrete. They had like a little design or something on the top. So it was non-slip basically. And concrete is rough. Well, that planchette thing has, um, it was plastic and it had the little felt tips on the bottom. So it would slide on the board cause it was from, um, Milton Bradley or whatever. It was, it was a store-bought game board. It wasn't a paper made one or something, but anyways, so we're out there talking and that creepy fucking energy came back and I can't remember what it said, but it started spinning again and we held on longer that time. But then finally I'm like, Oh hell no. And no sooner did we let go that planchette flew across the patio. And when I say it went across the patio, it didn't fling off the board and fly. It dragged. It was like, and flung off into the grass. You hear my elbow popped. I'm like, what the hell moved it? Like, cause it stayed on the rough concrete without flipping. It should have not have done that. There's no way it could have done that. And it's like, boof. And I was, I had it. I'm like, nope. I'm done with this. This thing's fucking creepy as shit. I think I burned it. I think we we burned it outside. Because I got rid of it after that. I was like, uh-uh. I ended up getting another one later on down the road. Don't ask me why. I've always been drawn to the metaphysical, the other side, the dead. I mean, I've seen spirits my whole life. I've always had communication. I always knew things before they would happen. I would have psychic dreams and stuff. Of course, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't understand it, but things like that had always happened to me. I just, just knew things. And I mean, now I know why, but I had nobody to explain this stuff to me and it would scare me. I was terrified of the dark, terrified. I always had this feeling that like in the middle of the night, if I had to get up to go pee or something, which the bathroom was right next to my bedroom. So I literally opened my door and the bathroom's right there. I don't have to go very far, but I had a nightlight in my room and I used to like always get this vision of somebody grabbing my ankles as I would get off the bed. It didn't even matter how old I was. Hell, as a teenager, even when I wasn't in that house anymore, I still had that feeling that someone was under my bed. I don't even know why I, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, but it's, I don't know, a lot of times mediums and psychics and stuff, they, they have a fear of the dark, whether it goes away or not. Usually as a child, you fear the dark anyways, or a lot of kids do. I was petrified of it. And it's just because of, you can't see, you know, you don't know who's there. And that's kind of an eerie feeling if you think about it. So whenever the power would go out and my nightlight would turn off and my fan would turn off because I always slept with a fan. The second the noise was gone because I needed something to drown out the silence because I would hear things and it makes you feel crazy sometimes. It still happens to me and I know what it is now, but I didn't know then. But anyways, the second everything would turn off, I would literally close my eyes and pull my covers up and scream. I'd be like, mom, 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 until she would come in my room and figure something out. Like she would either stay up with me or calm me down. I don't know. I could not be in the dark. She would have to bring me a flashlight. That's what she would do. I could deal with the, the no fan because I wasn't going to sleep until the power came on anyways, but I had to have a flashlight and I would just hold it kind of up to my face and look at the ceiling and just stare at the light that would be on the ceiling. I wouldn't, would not look around because it was dark over here. Even though I could shine my light, it's like, what if I shine my light and I see something scary? Like, fuck that shit. So I would just kind of stare up at the ceiling, up at the light, and I would just do little, like, draw whatever or do my little hand puppet things to entertain myself until the power came on. <laughs> like, I seriously was just petrified. And, I mean... I didn't have a crap ton of experiences in my home when I was younger. It was usually outside because my house wasn't haunted or anything. And I feel like once I started, you know, reaching out using the Ouija board and whatever, that's when 
spirits really started coming in and I tried so hard to shut it out so hard so so hard and it did work for quite a while but I've always felt energies around me <sighs> but yeah that was a scary Ouija board experience um I don't know my aunt had told me some creepy stories too and I think the board oh my gosh this is just coming to me this is freaky as shit the board had warned her it had said something about burn burning and I I remember because at the time when it was talking about burning like it was warning her about being burned and she related it to a situation that she knew of where there was like a house fire or something and she was kind of freaked out that it said it but that's not what it was warning her about because I can't remember if this was before no this was when her first her firstborn was born her first daughter she has two daughters and they're I think they're both adults now but anyways I don't think her second daughter was born yet. She might have been. But anyway, she was a baby. And she was being warned about about someone being burned. And then when her daughter, when her oldest daughter was like two, two and a half, she grabbed a cup of boiling water off from the counter and got third degree burns all down her face and Oh, it was horrible. It broke my heart seeing her like with all the scabs and oh my gosh, it was terrible. And that just tore my aunt to pieces. Like that was rough. Like I couldn't even imagine like going through what she went through or how she felt. And she just turned away for a second and she didn't push it far enough off the counter. And there her daughter was and whoop, right down her face. She did the right thing, which is why she has no scars now. And like it healed cause she was so young, but she basically drowned her in cold water after that, which, you know, was the right move. Um, that poor little baby. And it's so crazy how kids are too. Cause you know, she was very resilient and no matter how much pain she was in, you would have never known. Like she was just, she went back to playing like, like nothing ever happened. And it would really bother her when people would go oh, and look at her and just like, cause you can tell when people are kind of like, Oh my goodness. Or they're sad or they're heartbroken or they'd cry. Cause every time I'd look at her, I'd cry because it just broke my heart to see just how all the sores on her. And a lot that's how a lot of people felt. I mean, hell, even my aunt was that way. She was having a really hard time just being like consoling her daughter or being there with her because it was heartbreaking. She blamed herself, even though it wasn't her fault. It could have happened to anybody. But, um, you know, my cousin would, she knew that you were upset and it's like, we didn't want her to think that something was wrong, you know, because I don't know, we, we were worried that she wasn't going to recover. Like, like her looks would be affected forever and thank goodness they weren't but that was horrible and I can't even believe it the Ouija board said that and I just connected the dots right this second that's craziness so I mean it tells the truth from time to time depending on who you're talking to but that is insane and that was how many freaking years ago and now and now I'm thinking of it but yeah so there was that and then um I will tell you about my stalker story because we're only 20 minutes in or 28 minutes in and I was young. <laughs> I, I've had a few stalkers in my lifetime. I'm just going to say it's like I must attract the creepers and I'm serious. The living scares the shit out of me more so than the dead because I don't know, like to me, the dead can't really affect you. Yeah, they can affect your energy. And I've had creepy experiences where I was held down or, you know, I would feel how I feel how people pass away. So I'm not too big on feeling that there are some things I don't want to feel or don't want to see, but it's still not as scary as some creepy motherfuckers. I'm just saying. So anyways, this was like one of my first experiences with a creeper and you know, it's, it's like what people tell, what your parents warn you about when you're younger and, or you, you read about in a magazine cause we didn't have really have the internet at this point. Um, maybe it would, it would just, no, I hadn't, I don't think I'd had the internet yet. No, I don't think so. 
Anyways, whatever. Who cares? That's not part of the story. So, anywho, um, I was about 12, 13 years old. I think I was like 13 because I was in middle school. No, I was in sixth grade. I wasn't even in middle school yet. I was young. Anyways, whatever. Almost in middle school. And, um, no, I was in middle school because this was around the same time that someone thought I was Britney Spears. Like, <laughs> like seriously, when I was younger, I was wearing a white sweater and a plaid, like schoolgirl skirt. And I don't know what shoes I was wearing or anything, but my hair was, was lighter because I used to get highlights and it was more on the blonder side and it was kind of kinky curly, which when my hair is shorter than this, or if I scrunch it up, it will get curly and it was curlier then. It, it's kind of heavy now, so it straightens out more. But anyways, I, I kind of did resemble her a little bit, but not enough for someone to like mistake me for being her. You know what I mean? Like you could be like, yeah, I could kind of see a resemblance, but that's about it. And then if I smiled, you'd be like, oh hell, that ain't her. You know, I don't know. At least I didn't see it. But I was wearing the whole get up, so I guess maybe he thought that Britney Spears lived in that schoolgirl outfit or something, which that's not, no. And I was at Walmart, so I'm pretty sure she doesn't shop at Walmart. And if she does, she wasn't shopping at the Walmart in my town at the time, <laughs> I'm just gonna say. But it was hilarious, and it was around Halloween time too, and which is coming right up. It's my birthday. Oh, yeah. But anyways, um, I was looking at like the colorful hairspray or something. And this guy comes up to me. He just, I don't know. He was older than me at the time, but he's like a young kid to me now. And he started freaking out and he's like, oh my God, it's Britney Spears. And I'm like, what? And I'm like looking like where, <laughs> you know, like that would be cool because I liked her. And... <laughs> I'm like, you're fucking nuts. I don't even know where the hell she is. Whatever. So I go back to doing what I'm doing. And he's just like losing his fucking mind. And then when I stand up to leave the aisle, he's following me and he's like freaking out. Like he's shaking. And I, I'm like, he's like, Brittany, Brittany, like freaking out. And I was like looking around and then I, I look back at him and he was talking to me because there's nobody else around. And I, I'm just like, I didn't even say anything. And he's like, can I have your autograph? And he's like freaking out. I mean, he, this kid was losing his fucking shit. I gave, <laughs> I gave him an autograph. Um, so if you're watching this and that sounds familiar and that was you, it's a fake autograph. <laughs> but I didn't, I was like, I was young. I'm like, whatever. It was kind of funny. And my dad was there and he, he, he heard the whole thing. And as we're leaving, he's like, all right, Brittany, get your ass in the truck. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It was so funny. And I, I want to say it was the same. No, it wasn't the same time. It was another time I was at the store with my dad. It was the same Walmart and we were leaving and I was getting in the vehicle and right before I got in the vehicle, I heard someone yell my name. They're like, Hey Jess. And I turned to look obviously, cause that's my real name, not Brittany. And I see this guy standing there and he looks a lot older than me. And I'm like, not like old because he's probably younger than I am now at that time. But compared to how old I was at the time, it would be like someone my age basically talking to someone my child's age. It was fucking gross to think about. But anyways, I'm like, who the hell are you? And how do you know my name? You know? And I can't remember what he yelled to me, but it creeped me out that he knew my name. Oh, he said, I'll call you later. And I'm like, he must think I'm somebody else. And my dad was like, who is that? I'm like, I don't fucking know. And he's like, okay, weirdo. So we get home and... It was either later that night or the next night, I got a phone call and it was that guy. And I think my mom or my dad had answered the phone 
and was, they just said, you know, someone's on the phone for you, a, a guy's on the phone for you, and they thought maybe it was, like, a guy from school or something, so I pick up the phone, and it's the fucking creeper from Walmart, and I'm just like, who are you? I can't remember his name. I'm not gonna say it anyways, even if I did remember, but, um, I think it begins with an M. But anyways, I'm like, how'd you get my number? How do you know me? Like, cause he, he said, um, I'm friends with one of your friends or something. And I'm like, and the person he named, I was not friends with that person. Like she was one of my enemies. So maybe she gave him my information. I don't really know. Like this girl tortured me in high school. I mean, she stopped at one point because one of my friends threatened to beat her ass because she was trying to steal shit from me. And she she got her karma, I'm just going to say. Cause, but anyways, I'm not going to dive into that. But she was a wretched bitch. And you know what's crazy? <laughs> Is this girl's mother, my mom went to school with her mom. And her and my mom didn't get along either. It's almost like a generational thing. It's weird. And we didn't even know that until my mom said it and because when she heard the name she's like is so and so her mother and i'm like yeah she's like oh, i couldn't stand that <laughs> that bitch i'm like yeah well her daughter's the same way she's mean but anyways so that's how this dude knew me or uh, somehow and or at least that's the assumption that I have because that's the connection he made but she didn't have my number and she didn't even know where I lived because we were not friends I just knew her through school and she was mean so why the hell would I give her my information you know but anyways he called and it wasn't creepy at first and then he would try to call me every day and I'm like I don't want to talk to you I don't even know you you know so I would I started telling like my parents like if this person calls I don't want to talk. You just tell him I'm busy or I'm not home or whatever. So that's what they started to do. But then he would start calling more and more and multiple times in a day. And then he would start calling really late at night, which was really pissing my dad off. And you don't want to do that. I'm just going to say, because my dad, no, 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 no. We don't want to go there because then of course he'd take it out on me. But yeah, no. Anyways, it got to the point where I finally said, you know, like, Tell him not to call anymore. Just tell him that begin an overbearing parent or a, a scary dad and be like, don't talk to my daughter, you know, do something, just get rid of him. So he did. And the phone call stopped for a little while. And I thought that he had forgotten about me. I'm like, okay, he's done talking to me. Thank goodness. He listened. Dad scared him. We're good. Nope. Because I remember I got, I had, it was an early release. No, that, that was a different time. It was time for me to get off the bus. It was a regular day. And he was parked at the end of my road waiting for me. Because he could drive. He was way older than me. And I'm like, the bus stopped. And it was I was the only one getting off that day. And I walked up to the bus driver. And I knew him because he was my bus driver. But I also was friends with his daughter. So he knew me, you know, like I used to go over their house and shit. And I'm like, that guy is, he scares me. I'm like, he's been kind of stalking me basically. And he goes, okay, sit down. So I sat down and he finished the whole bus route. And he's like, I will drive you straight to your house. So at the end, I had to be on the bus longer, which sucked. But the guy was still sitting at the end of my drive, at the end of my road, because it was a private road. And the bus drove me straight to my house. And of course, he watched me walk into the house and I locked the door because he told me, he said, lock the door and don't answer for no one, you know, whatever. So he was just trying to make sure I was safe and I made it into the house. Well, of course, this motherfucker does not... <laughs> doesn't get the hint, you know, why is the bus going down the road, you know, because he had been watching. So he knew that I, that I would get off at the end of the road, that my bus didn't normally do that. So <laughs> he had ended up coming up to my house and he was sitting in my driveway and I didn't answer the door, nothing. I just pretended I wasn't there, even though I knew he knew I was in there. I just, I didn't. And he ended up leaving and then he started calling again. So of course my dad was like, stop fucking calling like what is your problem 
it was starting to get scary because why was he waiting for me? What was he going to do? What was in his, what was his like sadistic little plan, you know? And you know what's even crazier is later on down the road, I found out that this dude has AIDS. Like, God only knows what he was planning. And he had it at that time. <sighs> but anyways, um, he kept calling. And then he finally, uh, he showed up to my house another time well this was the last time that I didn't hear from him again um he showed up at my house and my father scared him scared him away with a gun because it was like you're a grown-ass man why are you even how do you even know my fucking daughter you know so that was one good thing my dad did and I was so thankful for that and then um and then that girl that I said I didn't get along with and that was like the connection between uh, us, I guess, how he knew me, she started, like, really, really attacking me verbally at school after that, when I, after he finally got scared away, and she started threatening me, saying that I was a fucking whore, and I was this, and I was that, and I slept with her man, and I didn't even know who her man was, I had no idea that he was dating her, so he was dating my, my enemy, basically, and stalking me. And because I wouldn't put up with him stalking me and my dad scared him away, all of a sudden he had to come clean and tell his girlfriend that he was sleeping with me. I was a virgin. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, that ain't true. But of course she didn't believe me. And that kind of, that kind of goes in with the... Um, the story time or the rant video that I just posted because you know your name gets thrown through the mud or there's slander and people start rumors and you know no matter what the truth is they don't care they don't listen and then they start spreading all these rumors and I was getting made fun of and every time she'd walk by me she would call me a whore and this and that and you know what really pissed her off is I wouldn't even react I wouldn't say nothing. I wouldn't yell back at her. Anything. I just pretended like I didn't even hear her. She was a ghost. She was vapor. And that used to get her so fucking fired up. She'd get even more mad because I acted like I didn't care. Even though I did, it was bothering me because she had this group of girlfriends that she would sick on me too. And it was like, I didn't even fucking do anything. Like, why are you guys being so horrible? It ended up stopping because, like I said, a friend of mine basically put her ass in her place because... I'm a lover, not a fighter. I can hold my own if I have to. I just didn't fucking want to, <laughs> you know? And I don't know if this goes hand in hand or not. I don't think it does because she was basically, I mean, she tortured me all through school. She was a year ahead of me. So there was at least one year, at least eighth grade, where I didn't have to deal with her ass because she was in the high school before me. But... I, I think I was in, was I in seventh grade? Yeah, because I think it had something to do with her. When I was in seventh grade, I walked out of the, whatever class I was in to use the bathroom, and I got and jumped in the bathroom. Some girls had attacked me in the bathroom. I didn't even know who the fuck they were. And I remember, because after that, I had went home, and of course I told my parents what happened. I mean, they didn't call a school or nothing, because back then... You know, you didn't do that. You handle your own shit, basically. And I, it was freaked me out. Like, I'm just like, I didn't even understand why it happened. So either these girls just wanted to do that to some random person or they had, they had it out for me or someone sent them. I don't fucking know. I think it was just a random thing, but it was scary all the same. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And having three girls on three to one is not pleasant. But anyways, um... After that, of course, I talked to my dad about it, and he's like, oh, you're going to learn to fight back and defend yourself or whatever. So he ended up kicking the shit out of me at home because he was like, at first it started like messing around, like he's just kind of like play slapping me, and I'm just going like this, like trying to defend him smacking me, like cut it out, I don't want to do it, like cause I had a bad day. It's like, dude, I don't want to fucking do this. And then it started picking up, and he ended up kicking me and stuff. Like I was, I ended up on the floor, and he was like, kicking my sides and whatever into the sliding glass door and I'm like I get jumped at school and then I get my ass handed to me at home 
because it it went from joking to not so joking because it fucking hurt it wasn't like he was just lightly uh, uh, it was not that it was either harder than he thought or an excuse to to hit me i don't know because shit like that was a common occurrence anyways but i don't know people are fucking nuts <laughs> it's just some crazy stories but yeah, that stalker dude scared me. But I had another creeper one time because when I said it was an early release date, I was even younger. But this guy wasn't, he didn't stalk me. Like it wasn't, it didn't happen. It only happened one time. At least he might have been stalking me ahead before that. I'm not really sure. But my, uh, the bus driver didn't drive me to my house this time because I, I was out there, I think, I'm pretty sure my neighbor was there too because at that point we got off the bus at the same time and we weren't in middle school or nothing we were in elementary school or I was yeah she must have been too because um we got off the bus at the same time or maybe I don't know we got off the bus at the at the height when the normal time when middle school and high schoolers would get off the bus because it was early release or something and there was a car parked at the end of the the road and we didn't think anything of it because you know there's multiple people that live on that road so we get off the bus and we start going well this car like the guy before we started driving he said hey do you want to go for a ride and me and my neighbor look at each other like no we don't want to go for a fucking ride and so this wasn't stalkerish this was like creeper trying to pick up kids and I'm I was thinking like thinking back I'm wondering if he thought we were older than we were or if he was just a pedophile. Who knows? Um, I'm going to go with the latter on that one. But anyways, we didn't want to get in the car. So we start, we're, we're walking, but we're, we picked up our pace a bit. Like, all right, let's power walk to the house kind of thing. And then as we're talking, it's like, well, I don't want him to know where I live. You know, like we should... We should go past the house just in case. And we're looking back and he wasn't following. And then so it's like, okay, we're kind of calming down. Then he turned the car and he started following. And I'm like, he's following. We beat feet. We started running. And I think we ran all the way to her house, not mine. And shut the door and we hid. But I don't know if he just drove around the neighborhood and then left. But he never, I never saw him again after that. But I was scared, like, you know, getting off the bus after that moment. I was like, I hope that MF ain't around. So either he thought we were somebody else, he thought we were older, or he was a creeper. But yeah, that was pretty scary too. I don't know. I'm so glad that <laughs> nothing ever happened. And that's the type of shit that freaks me out with my kids and stuff. Like, you know, my daughter's at the age where I, I let her walk and she'll leave the high school. She's a freshman. So she'll leave and she'll walk to my sister's house, which is not very far from the high school because our house is a lot farther. And she almost walked to the house, which is kind of crazy. I was like, damn, girl, you're doing good. And she's lost a bunch of weight. Like, I'm so proud of her because um, she's really trying. That's like a goal of hers. And that's why I'm proud because I don't care how much she weighs. She's beautiful regardless. But anyways... I get so worried that someone's going to try to talk to her. I'm warning her about this stuff all the time. And I tell her, I'm like, if you ever get that creepy feeling, you know, put a little pep in your step, but call me or pretend to talk on the phone or do something like people are less likely to want to come up to you or pick you up or whatever. If they think someone can hear you or, you know, something like that. So I'm like, and if you're listening to music, always have one headphone out so you can hear, you know, you got to be vigilant, stay vigilant. But, I don't know, and her brother is so overprotective, too, which I'm glad, because he's like, you're really going to let her walk? It's like, yeah, I let you walk at that age, you know? I know she's a girl, but she can, you know, have to give her some type of freedom. But, whew, anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this Spooktober story time story. Um, and I'll talk about some more psycho people, because trust me, I've met my fair share of them, and I've dated most of them. <laughs> Um, but that's not going to be a spooktober thing because this is my last one for the month. Um, but I'll, I'll continue with story times and stuff. So some of those will be included in some story times because I know some of you are really enjoying these stories and 
So I'll try to do it once a week. I'm trying to do it on Tuesdays. I don't know if the story times will continue on Tuesdays or if I'll pick a different day, but um, that's what I was doing, the Spooktober story times. So. But I love you a long time, and I'll talk to you real soon. Peace.